Hey guys, we're going to convert this Sable 2015 machine into an Arduino powered CNC machine. Just a quick introduction on the Sable 2015. Uh, this is a branded Sable 2015. They, they call it, um, it's under, uh, sold only by one seller on eBay, which I believe is Luke Chan 666 or 606 or something. If you Google Sable 2015 CNC machine, this will pop up. Um, I purposely bought the one without any electronics on it because I knew I was going to be swapping out uh, and putting my own electronics. Um, what makes this a unique machine is that uh, it kind of differs from all the other CNC machines in this category in size. Um, it's what known as a fixed gantry, uh, so the gantry doesn't move at all, so this x-axis here moves back and forth, but the y-axis moves up and down, so this table actually moves back and forth. And the 2015 um, it, it tells you that there's actually a 20 centimeter by 15 centimeter work area. Um, what I really like about this is that there's actual a real spindle on this. Um, so there's a 400 watt motor um, that's been detached from the spindle and then the spindle is done here, which should give it a, a pretty accurate result. Um, and this was sold separately, so I bought this separately and I bought the machine separately. You could buy the whole package together, but it still runs off the old uh, Mach 3 system, which I don't like, and uh, we're gonna run Arduino with it. Let's take a look at the electronics that we're going to use to convert this to uh, an Arduino CNC. Um, so that is actually just a carcass with no electronics whatsoever. So no power source, no driver board, no anything. So what we have here is all what I think is we're going to use to convert that to uh, something um, that is going to be pretty awesome. Um, so this is a 24 volt, 10 amp uh, power supply. Pretty standard stuff. You can buy this in most electronic hobby stores uh, or online. Um, a standard cable that will, that will uh, connect to the mains power. Uh, over here some more cabling. This is the shielded USB cable. Uh, it's about a foot and a half and I'm going to use this um, not as a USB cable but I'm going to chop it off and use the leads inside uh, to um, hook up a couple of connectors to all these buttons here. So this will be my e-stop, this will be my resume or start, this will be a pause and I have a few other switches that I'm going to use um, to turn on the spindle and this is a momentary switch for the Arduino reset. Underneath here is a couple of DuPont connectors, the four, uh, four lead DuPont connectors. These are extension cords, so I'm going to swap out and we're going to solder in um, the stepper motors so that we can, we can connect it directly to the CNC shield. Um, right here is a project box that I'm going to attach to the back here, so that will house the Arduino, the CNC shield, um, and some other electronics in here if I choose to. There's a little bit more space. Um, and also a 24 volt fan that I'm going to use to, uh, to, to vent this thing. Um, and uh, let's take a closer look at the actual Arduino section of it. So this is a standard, um, actually it's not really a standard, it actually makes special edition Arduino Uno, um, but in all other cases it's actually just an Arduino Uno, so that's uh, pretty standard here. This is a CNC shield made by Protonier, this is a version 3, he's already up to 3.1, uh, which has a few more options on it, but this is actually a great CNC board um, to power something that's this small, because this these stepper motors are a 1.7 amp, uh, and these, uh, these driver chips that come with it uh, put out a max of 2 amps, so it's going to be a perfect thing here. Um, one thing to note on here are the uh, there are four axes, but Gerbil only supports three axes, and this red axis here can be duplicated if your CNC machine has two stepper motors for an axis or something, if you have a really large gantry. So um, that is controlled by a couple of jumpers over here. So you can go to protonier.com or protonier blog. I'm not quite sure what his website is, but you can find him. Uh, look up CNC Shield version 3 and this you'll see this exact board uh, everywhere. So it's just as simple as actually just putting it on like any other shield. Um, it lines up with all of the contacts on the Arduino board and it pops on like that. Um, and then there are three driver chips because I'm only using three axes, so I'm actually not going to use the fourth axis. Uh, and if you look underneath here, um, you'll see the 2A, 2B, 1A, 1B. So that's where the uh, the stepper motor signals are going to be sent out. So uh, really good way of doing that uh, to, to put the direction because the contacts on the other side are actually quite similar. So you could install this backwards by accident. So if you look underneath here, it's going to be 1A, 2B, 2B, 1A, that kind of stuff. Um, and that should face uh, the connections. Um, that will go out to your stepper motor. So this one is installed this way, like so. And then again, looking down here, uh, and that's gonna be installed here, like that. And before I install the last one, there's a set of jumpers right here, uh, and there's three of them. So a combination of them will, will give you different types of steps. Um, 
So right now I have it, all of them connected here, which will give me a full 16th, one 16th step. So we'll go into those numbers later, but definitely right now, uh, for the sake of uh, this tutorial, I guess, is uh, I just have them all put in there. So there's go combinations of it. Put one here, one here, two here, two here. Uh, it'll give you a combination of between full steps to one 16th step. So we'll install this last one. So my idea here is to take this uh, plastic enclosure box, uh, which is a pretty standard box, um, and then house the electronics inside of it, uh, and then have extra space for some switches and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully, I'm maybe going to mount this fan underneath or on top or somewhere. Um, and this is a 24 volt fan, not just a regular 12, uh, uh, 12 volt fan, because I want to just run it off the single uh, power source. So that should just fit in there like that. And then we're going to close it up and. Um, uh, put a couple holes in here and then keep this thing cool, but also protect it from flying chips if we're going to be milling aluminum or something like that. So that's uh, that's exactly where that's going to go. Let's take a closer look at what I'm going to use as a pendant. Uh, it'll be the main controller, but it'll also be a separator from the machine. So uh, I'm going to take this, which is a nice assembly uh, with a box here. It's got some heavy duty switches. Um, so this will be my e-stop. So once I push it in, you have to turn it to turn it back on. So this is pretty important if you have a machine crash or something like that. Um, this will be the resume button or the start button. Uh, this will be the pause button. And I also will have a small momentary switch that I'll probably put here or maybe here or something. But this is going to be the Arduino reset or the soft reset, basically control X. Um, and I'm probably going to put this, um, which will be the spindle control, um, probably somewhere, somewhere on here. We're going to, we're going to fix that out later. So while I'm waiting for the uh, soldering iron to heat up, um, I'll tell you what I really want to do for this machine. So this is the back of the machine, so if you want to consider that this is the back of the machine. So the spindle is here, but you can't really see it. So what I really wanted to do, because there's a big flat surface here, is actually just mount the, um, mount the power source and the electronics on this machine so that it's like self-contained uh, and it won't have to be anywhere else. So I think this will be nice and clean, uh, then I'll be able to build an enclosure for it and make, basically make it a lunchbox so you can see so I can take it to some locations and collaborate with people. So um, I bought these purposely because they're going to be sized uh, for the back of it. So um, that's the plan for that and uh, let's get some pretending going on with wires and uh, strip some stuff. Okay, so I've done. I've already taken off uh, the Z-axis stepper motor uh, just so I can do some diagnostics on it because um, these aren't um, identified as uh, pairs. So the way you find out uh, stepper motor pairs is because that's the way that you need. If you can't, you need to find the pairs so that you can tell the stepper motor to go in forward direction or backward direction. So the way you find pairs is actually take two, any two of the wires um, and then put them together. And uh, first, before you do that, feel. Uh, the spindle and if it moves freely um, that's that's the kind of the resistance you're looking for. If you take any two of the wires and you put them together and then try again and you feel that there's resistance then you found a pair. Obviously the other pair will be the other pair. So um, for these particular ones uh, I found that red and green together are a pair and blue and yellow are a pair. So now that I know that I can actually cut my leads for these um, DuPont connectors and then connect them up as pairs so that when they when they get pushed onto the CNC board um, They'll be correct. All right So what I've done here is actually taken all of the tips um, the exposed wires that I'm going to solder together and then pretend them with some solder uh, It makes adding them together a lot easier and I've also put some shrink tubing um, Color-coded for the pairs so they don't get messed up if I have to troubleshoot later um, so that when I'm done soldering the leads together I can just put the shrink tube over hit it with a heat gun and then uh, it'll be insulated. Alright so for this y-axis one I'm actually going to make an extra long lead uh, so I've cut the tip off of the uh, connector here and uh, off there off the here to make um, about a uh, two foot cable because the Y axis table is actually going to, it's going to sweep across this way and going to cover the, the motor. So I don't want to have it dangling out here in case the uh, motor, the table comes and shears it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redirect it. So it's this way and then up over here. All right. So we're going to handheld here. This is the big nerd nest and the kind of the first test. Um, so let's go from all of the hard work we did with the, um, with the leads going into the CNC board. So I have the Y or the Z axis going into the Z, um, Z port here and then the X and then Y. And then I also have my connection. So that's the USB going to my Mac. And I also have a 24 volt source um, already um, wired up. It should be ready to go. Um, this one lead is going to the CNC board. So it's gonna power that. And then I'm gonna plug it in. I don't have a switch on the 
um, the power source yet, but uh, that's going to come eventually. So right now, plugging it in will turn on the system. I put um, this uh, the the top of the enclosure just to insulate it from the metal table. So theoretically, if I plug this in, nothing explodes. We should work. So I'll turn it on and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in for the first time. Hopefully nothing explodes. If nothing explodes, that means it's gonna work, uh, hopefully. I have all the leads checked and everything, positive, negative, all that other jazz. Um, and uh, here we go. Nothing exploded, which is good. So silence, no news is good news. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I've opened up a uh, Grubble controller and already connected to the uh, Arduino here. So the Arduino is already preloaded with uh, Ar uh, Gerbil 0.9 J, which is the um, most current version of it. So I'm going to put a feed rate of 1000 and see if we can jog around. That's a good sign. So it sounds like. Looks like it's working. And let's jog the Z. Everything sounds very healthy. And those anti-backlash nuts are sounding really nice. It's, it's nice sharp movements. Going left, right. And like I described, so this is a fixed gantry. Uh, so the gantry doesn't move, but the table does. So the table should move back and forth. So this is a good opportunity to take a look at the uh, stepper motor direction because right now I've pushed forward on the um, on the uh, the table and that it's actually moving backwards, which means uh, my leads are opposite. So it's a pretty simple matter of swapping those leads out. Okay, so we have switched the leads back on the y-axis, and so when I push the uh, back button on the controller, I should have it move this way. So let's see what happens. Perfect. So now we know how to change it in case that you can actually do that in software as well, but changing the leads physically actually helps just as well. So now that I know the system works, so I'm just going to run a really quick job and see if it actually works, uh, sending G code from the from Gerbil controllers straight to the machine. So this is basically air cutting. So you heard that stuttering at the beginning there, so that's the z-axis actually losing steps, uh, which is a good sign because now I know the max travel for this can't exceed such and such number I have in the setting, so I can change that later when I want to do some testing. Everything sounds really healthy, uh, looks like it's moving quite well, and I know this file particularly well because I've cut this dozens and dozens of times on other machines, so um, this is a really healthy movement here, so right now it's peck drilling, and then um, it should move, move up to a safety height. And we're gonna move the table over. So you can see more peck drilling this way. And moving to a safety height. And uh, looks like we're okay.